be folks. My name is Captain Phil, and I'm running this boat. And you know, it's a shame whenever you say, "Oh, I just missed one," and then this guy says, "Oh, I got another. Oh, I got another. Oh, I got another." <laughs> Good talking to you. <laughs> That's all you had to say, huh? That is it. It's not uncommon for that to be up to that that mark up there, that upper mark, right? No, I I put my boat in up next to that guy's trailer before. Have you really? Yeah. All the way up there? <laughs> All the way up there, yeah. Holy cow. That was in August one year. I backed in up the well, I can't get any farther, so I just backed off right there at the end and put it in. Oh, <laughs> well, it's a nice steep road. road. I mean, it's yeah. basically a giant boat ramp. It's really easy to back in. That's funny. Good morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Ten Horse Money YouTube channel. I'm out here on Clearwater Lake with my man, Phil. He invited me along to uh, hopefully catch a few fish. We're going to be targeting smallmouth today. Just ran into Ricky Oric. He's out here. He just got here. He's going the other way. So we're kind of going to keep uh, contact with each other and see if one of us can figure something out. Beautiful morning. It's like 32, 33 degrees. Sunshine has been out all morning, but it's starting to cloud up light breeze water temps are what high 40s probably or uh it was 40 what was that this morning 46 46 okay so a little bit chillier than back in uh near home in southern illinois and southeast missouri but either way we're gonna have fun man i haven't been down this is my second time down here first time was with phil and we had a pretty pretty good time totally different conditions that was like a springtime deal if i remember right the water was up water's what like winter pool i guess basically yeah. okay yeah it's down quite a bit so uh, here we go, see what happens. Yeah, there's been three over there at Cedar, all in one little area. There he is. Yeah. Small mouth thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, guy. There we go, folks, on the board. Nice smallmouth. Sweet. There we go. Stupid tube. Stupid tube, smallmouth, clear water lake. Nice. Feels good. Just picked it up, kind of soft. I like it. Boy, that's a look at that has never happened. Stephanie was winning like left and right, and people were like, Oh, you sending her text with a secret number? Well, the first time she won, I'd give her my stuff. Yeah, I think you guys right? Yeah. That's the one that broke you off. That's the one that broke you off, probably. Probably is. What do you mean? I don't know. Yeah, I want to bite today, baby. It's awesome. Not bad. About to say, really. All right. Phil's guide service. Thank you, Phil. There we go, man. We found a few fish. Phil just broke one off, and I just caught his fish. Well, it doesn't have a shaky head in its throat, but I think it was the same fish. Same area. Nice little Missouri smallmouth. This is fun. Beautiful fish, man. Beautiful fish. Strong fighting. Water's like 46 degrees and uh, slow morning, but starting to come alive. Maybe they're waking up. It is. Yep. It's a little tick. Another smallie. Sweet. I found them now. <laughs> Get up in here, Buster. All right. This is fun, fun. There's a smallmouth. They're on this tube, folks. They're on the tube. Film our guide service. I'll give you his phone number at the end of the video. That's a pie. Tell you one thing about having the tournaments down here. Yep. They're picking it up and keeping it. We're releasing so many smallmouth down down at the other end of the lake. They're yeah. standing out in the lake pretty good. That's good. Or Doug's fishing today. He's making sausage. Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever eaten his sausage? Yeah, it's really good. Really good. A couple times I fish with him, bring some of those sticks, and they're they're excellent. Yeah, I bought mine from Dunn's man a long time ago. 
Is it an actual auto retrieve? Mm, I, I, mean, I think it is. I'll have to look at it and see. I think everybody should have one. That'd be great. It's seriously, it's saved me several hundred bucks just in the last six months. Well, that story I was telling you about on the live stream that night, I was fishing with a guy down at Lake of the Ozarks night fishing, and I had a big worm on, and we was over on the Coughlin ramp, and I threw it out, and I got in a tree. And he said, here, take this auto tree, you know, and try it out. And I said, I said ah, it's just a worm. He said, no, man, go ahead. So I dropped it down on there and shook it around a little bit, and I come up, and I said, man, I feel like I got more. That's a better one. That's a lot better one. Yeah. Mr. Montgomery is smoking them today. Oh yeah. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Look at that one. That's my PV. Nice. Holy crap. There we go. That's what we came for, folks. Look at that one. We're going to put that one on the scale. Nice. Three and three quarters. That's a nice one. Heck yeah, I can tell, man, the way he bowled up. I'm like, that ain't no little 14 incher. Look at that, folks. That's what you come to Clearwater for. Beautiful fish. Fills guide service. The stupid tube, man. The stupid tube is the deal today, for whatever reason. They're wanting that. Phil's throwing a jig. He's getting a few bites, but they're grabbing this. The bite's just subtle. You know, they're just kind of picking it up, moving off with it. But man, this is fun. What an opportunity to catch beautiful smallmouth in the wintertime. All right there, I'll talk a little bit about a stupid tube here in a little bit. Talk about the actual tube I'm using and how I've got it rigged up. That is a beautiful smallmouth. That's over three, it feels like it anyway. What is it? 434. 434? Turn that sucker around. 436. There you go, folks. 43. That is definitely my PB in Missouri smallmouth. Holy crap. 436, folks. 436. If you notice, I'm fishing in the back of the boat, and Phil's kind of put me in timeout. He's like, you're going to have to sit in the back of the boat now. <laughs> it's just part of it. Clearwater Lake's about 1,800 acres. It's impounded by the Black River, and it's not uncommon to see the lake level rise 30 or 40 feet above that, which would put it at about, I think, like 10,000 surface acres. It's steep canyon-type stuff, uh, rock, wood, no grass. But it's it really fishes like a river. It's basically like a river. There's not really any coves or bays or anything. There's little short pockets and maybe, you know, guts that go back. But for the most part, you're fishing a river that kind of widens out. It's got a really tall dam, so you know that's why it just kind of goes vertical. Let's go look on my graph and it's to kind of give you an idea of how the lake lays out and why it can swell from 1800 acres to 10,000 acres. Okay, we went to Google Earth to pull up Clearwater Lake. My GPS, the antenna was not working. My boat's in the garage downstairs and just couldn't get a good signal. So here's the dam right here. And all the way up here is the main tributary. This is the Black River. So you've got the Black River coming in. You've got Sinking Creek right here. You come back down by the dam come up here you've got Webb Creek Let's see go all the way up this creek here or this is Logan Creek I'm sorry and then over here you have Webb Creek so that's your four main tributaries now at this level this is going to be about 2,000 acres but as you come up here you can see all of this this is the Black Creek and this is Sinking Creek come in when you get heavy rains, all this dry land is gonna flood. So the water, this is kind of flat right here. You can see all this dirt, this is all from being flooded. That's why there's not as much vegetation growth. So this lake just kind of blows up. If you go down the lake, you can see all this stuff is gonna have water, you know, when it gets up really high. All this right in here, you know, you're gonna have a nice little cove right here when it's up high. Come on down the lake. You know, this right here is going to get water up in it. And it just really expands. All this right in here is going to get wet. Go back in this Cape Spring Hollow. You can kind of see how this is going to lay out when the water is up 20 or 30 feet. But it really makes the lake fish big. You got a lot of flooded uh, buck brush and just 
lot more to fish. It's uh, almost overwhelming when this lake is up. It, this, it gets flooded all up in here. So it goes from 1,800 acres to 8,000, 10,000 acres. You know, all this right here, this big old flat, all this gets water in it and just cover everywhere. And what happens in the winter is these fish will migrate out of the rivers and they'll come down here in the winter into the main lake. So they'll be anywhere in this whole area right here. That's why the fishing gets good and the fish get kind of concentrated. Oh yeah. Bill's making a comeback. He might be yeah. in the last one. I think he in. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, about the same. It's a good oh, fish. Man. Good fish. Shade. Shade. Chunk rock. I shouldn't talk because, you know, I probably won't catch any more fish. But yeah, that's coming on a little jewel jig, a little grub trailer. Just want to remind you that if you do go to Clearwater to take advantage of this winter smallmouth fishing or any fishing for that matter, be kind to the fishery. The fishery's fragile. You know, there's a limited amount of, amount of smallmouth in the lake. Just release them, you know, let them go, have fun, enjoy the day, and I guess what I want to say is just remember that this is an opportunity that we're given and we don't want to take advantage of it. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, you better put a tube on there, brother. I was getting ready to tie a try a jig. I want to try that rock hound out, but God, it's hard to put this thing down. Here we go. This is fun. This rod, I, I bought, these are, this is a Falcon Kara rod, and I got four of them. I bought them used. So I got two from Jerry and two from Ron, but man, that is a sensitive, super sensitive rod. Some Falcons in there. I really like this rod. I'm tempted to buy several more. There's another bite. Got him that time. That's the same fish. Same fish. Textbook place. Yep, a little rock slide. That fish hit it twice. Hungry little sucker. I like that um, Kentucky Legends ham. They sell it at like Walmart. That's pretty good stuff. That's what it feels like. They love the fight, man. That's what my confidence jig on now. Look out. Things are getting ready to change. Little we'll swinging. Nice. There you go. Phil is on the board. It's a good one. He was eating it. It wasn't that brown. Jewel jig. Jewel jig. There we go. Uh, Gabe didn't, wasn't sitting and eating a sandwich or anything. I did this all on my own. Never give up. <laughs> Never give up. Well, he's at now, he's more large now. Got him that time. I thought he was getting past. He does last week. Solid fish. Mouth love. I don't know, man. Check this jig out, guys. This is a Cumberland Pro Rockhound jig. I was talking to Isaac, and he sent me some of these. He's like, you need to try these out. They're, you know, it's hair jig, but it's got a little bit of rubber in there. It's got that wire weed guard. This is just kind of brown with yellow. And first cast, you know, I got a bite, and then about three casts later, caught me a decent smallmouth. And I've got a little. This is a Ned Rage Bug. I think that's what they call it. You know, it's a Ned Rig Rage Bug thing. So, it's pretty exciting. Comes through rock really good. This is tied on the Procaster Jig Head, which is a great jig head in uh, around rock. Oh, 
The bite? There's another bite. I got him. Get in here. Man, they're biting. This is awesome. Go, little rock hound. Kind of liking this little jig. Super finessey. Look at that hook. It was not coming off. I've right, been catching a few fish on this Carmel Pro rock hound jig, brown and orange. And this is what I'm tipping it with. This is a Strike King Rage Ned Crawl in Crawl Daddy color. Really good little finesse trailer for winter fishing and seems to be working pretty good today. It's kind of, it's got a ribbed main body, just small little Rage flippers, super petite. And smallmouth really like it. There's another one. That's a little bit better one. Isn't that, that worthy? I don't know. No, I don't think so. It's a good one, though. Oh, yeah. I think they're biting this jig better than the tube. So, Here, let me, let me help you. Let me get down here this fish for you. You need to touch fish, man. That's another good one. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. I, I'm not doing too good. There you go. Solid fish. Yeah, let me get the lure out for Wait, you. I'm going to take a picture of that one. Oh. Show it to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Thanks. That's like nine to nothing. Yay. So I've gotten more bites quicker with this jig than that tube. I mean, I've had three bites like really quick. So it makes me wonder if, I don't know, that's interesting. Oh, Another nice one on that rock hound. Come on, pro rock hound, man. Pretty cool little bait. There were two key baits today that were working for me and Phil. There was a jig and there was the tube. I did catch one fish on a shaky head, but that was irrelevant. There he is. These mm -hmm. fish. Thought he was Jesus, man, walking on water. Good God. There we go, folks. A little midday report. Unless you want to do the mid. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Phil's, Phil's being bashful. It's gotten real slow. Um, the winds died down. Suns came out, and it's just gotten kind of slow. So I picked up this little, it's just a little eighth ounce shaky head, and zoom, fish doctor. Just fishing some brush. It's a nice little largemouth. It's mostly been smallmouth today, but I think this is the second largey we've caught. Feisty little sucker. These two things were getting it done. Now, Phil was throwing a jewel football head in brown, and he caught a few fish on that. I was using this sucker right here. Let's talk a little bit about this jig. This is a really cool jig. This is the Cumberland Pro Lures Rock Hound. Now, this is hair, like synthetic fiber type of hair. And it's got a little bit of round rubber tied on the top. Really unique jig. It's tied on the Procaster head. It's got a gammy hook. It's got a dual wire weed guard. One of the significant things about hair in cold water is it keeps its action. You know, a silicone type skirt has a tendency to get stiff, where this hair, it, it just retains its movement in cold water. So this jig was designed for smallmouth but it works equally well on spots and largemouth. I did catch, uh, I caught, I think I caught one largemouth on this today. It's mostly smallmouth deal. There he is. No. Largemouth, nice. That's a largemouth. All right. Going for the trifecta. Look at that beautiful largemouth. Man, nothing but good colors on that sucker. That was fun. Ate that jig. But impressed with this jig, it goes through rock really good, goes through wood really good, and it's a compact kind of deal. In fact, I put this little Rage Ned Bug trailer on there. But I think you could hang like a swimming chunk, maybe a speed crawl, something really, you know, small profile. 
just to give it that that compact presence. Really cool jig. It's called the Rockhound. You can get them on, I think, Tackle Warehouse. Uh, if you just look Cumberland Pro Rockhound jig, you will find it and you can figure out what it comes buy. in several colors. This is, I think this is green pumpkin orange. Maybe it's brown orange. I believe it's green pumpkin orange. They've got, they've got a black and chartreuse. They've also got a white and they may have another color, but the one I was throwing today was this sucker right here. Oh, we got a mate now, you know, back in. He's fishing out of a V bottom boat with a troll motor, little, little 10 horse motor and a troll motor. You know, run the, run the boat, turn around backwards and run the troll motor. Dang, I just had one on there. Did you? Yeah, he pulled down on it and spit it. Super soft bite. Yeah, they are. Sometimes they peck it, and other times they just, just mouth it. Yep. Got it, he came back and got it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Decent. Nice one, man. Yeah. He was just holding it. Yep, he was just holding on to it. It's okay. Clothes on whip. Thanks. All right. Here we go. Super soft bite. I mean, I felt him pull back on it and just let it sit. And uh, he's just kind of just barely pulling on it. You know, earlier they were kind of hitting it pretty good. Seems like it's slowing down a little bit. The sun's getting higher. I just had a mosquito land on my hand. Really? Yeah, we're in December and there's a mosquito. Crazy. Nice fish though. There was a deer come down off this hill and there was a beetle chasing it. The deer come down, he got, you know, somewhere along here. He went in the water and he swam across. And I swear to God, that beetle come down, hit the bank right here, ran up a little bit, ran back, hit the water, swam across, took off, went after that deer. Wow. How the hell did he know that deer across the lake? Yeah. That feels like a better fish. <laughs> nah, it's not that big. I got it. He just came sideways on me. All right. Still biting. Here you go, folks. Really unique little cold water jig. The Rockhound. It's the first time I've really thrown this, but this is definitely the situation. Cold water, smallmouth, spotted bass, even largemouth. Just uh, something about that that hair, man. Just uh, just really does good in cold water. Yeah. Good one. Nice. Go man, it's been a while. There's your last fish. I'm sorry, not, not as big as we're leaving now. <laughs> the other bait that was working for us is the stupid tube. I broke my Missouri smallmouth PB twice on this trip, and both these fish came on that stupid tube. It's a pretty unique little bait. A lot of people will fish a tube Texas rigged with a sliding sinker, or they'll have an exposed hook jig head. This is kind of a hybrid of both of them. You know, the hook point is text posing there, so it is weedless. And the jig head is on the inside, which gives it a unique spiraling action. Another thing that I think is cool about this setup is since that weight is on the inside, you're not getting the clacking of the actual weight hitting the rock or the wood. It's not getting that clinking sound. It's the plastic is what's hitting the bottom. So it's a little more finessey, a little more stealthy. It's a different sound. I think fish can maybe get used to hearing that weight, whether it be tungsten or lead hitting the rocks and the wood. Sometimes it's good when they're aggressive. You know, it attracts them, they come to that noise. But I think there's other times where they may be in a little bit of a neutral mood and they don't want to hear all that clanking. They want something more natural, just that soft plastic kind of tinking up against the rocks. The line tie is 90 degrees vertical and it really gives it that pitching movement when you pull back on it as it's basically this tube is kind of blunt on the front and it hits as it hits rocks and you're pulling it kind of does this 
and it gives it that crawl dead kind of pinchers up defensive position type of deal and it's just a unique way to fish a tube so let's um i'll show you what's inside of here you can get a look at it and i'll show you how to rig one of these up uh oh Oh, it's another good one. I think he's a net worthy one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good one. It ain't as good as the last one, but it's pretty dang good. Oh crap. Are you kidding me? That might be bigger, huh? That's bigger, isn't it? Oh my god. <laughs> it's bigger. Oh, oh my god. god. It's bigger. Yeah, it might be. Holy moly, it's taller. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Good, Gonga Monga. Gonga Monga. Oh, we hung in here. That's a freaking stud. That's my last tube, Phil. Here. Sorry. Oh, no. Here. I got some more of that color, I think. Get it out of his mouth. Get the tube out of his mouth, baby. Go from there. We ain't hooked. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, he wasn't coming off. There we go. Got him out of net anyway, don't we? Okay. okay we got, got away that one. Oh, that's fat. That's a fatty there. Look at that, folks. Boom! That is a chunk, man. Beautiful fish. God, that's awesome. Tubes, tubes the deal today. That is a beautiful fish. Look at that. Uh, I don't know. He's, he's close to four. He's got to be close to four. That's that's a better looking fish. Uh oh, he's bigger. Is he? 456. 456. <laughs> yes. Son of a gun. Nobody's caught these kind of fish down here. Nice. Uh, Look at that. Holy crap, gotta get more pictures. Yes, Stay 456. 456. So we got almost nine pounds of two fish. Yes. That's 20. Easy. Mm -hmm. Easy 20. Yep. Look how wide that fish is. All right, Beautiful. let's let it go. There we go, folks. 456 Missouri smallmouth. Stud. Awesome. Let's let it go. Beautiful fish. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Gone. Here's what the jig head looks like. It's a Kel style hook. This is a 4 rod and I like a 316 ounce weight. These are hand poured by a buddy of mine, so they're not commercially available. There are some other options. Um, my buddy Rich was telling me the tube hook that he uses, and he, he's a Minnesota guy, so he fishes a lot of the stupid tubes. He recommends the Bastec Agitator Jig Heads and the V&M EWG Tube Head. Those are two of the ones that so he Let's rig uses. this sucker up. I've got some crocagator flipping tubes. This is just a green pumpkin, super salty tube. We're gonna take our tube. This is important. Before you insert the hook, you wanna make sure that all these tentacles are kinda of splayed out like this. You don't want any of the tentacles going down the inside of the tube because this will cause it to look funny when you're done with it. So you've got an open center like that. You just take your hook and you're gonna thread it down the middle. It's open down there, so you just kind of run it down there. This is key right here. When you get to about a quarter inch from the head of the tube, that's where you wanna poke your tube through. So about right here, the reason being is you wanna allow room for this ball head to sit in front of the hook point. You don't want it to be you know, crowded in there or it's just gonna be a mess. So. We've got to this point right here. We're going to make sure that all our tentacles are outside of the cavity. Get them all spread out. And then we're going to make sure we hold this tube vertical like this. Pull that hook point through. And then we're going to get to this point right here. Right before we insert or actually pull the lead part of it inside of the tube, we want to moisten it. Just kind of moisten it. Now I want to take the bend of the hook and I'm just going to pull it and just kind of work it in there. It's gonna work its way through there. Then we're gonna get to this point right here. Now, all we gotta do is just kind of pinch that tube and the line tie is gonna pop out. So it's looking like this, like this. And now we're just going to kind of fold our tube back and just insert that point 
like this. And there we go. This is stupid tube. It's real effective bait any time of the year. Now, another thing I will do is I will actually take some pliers and I'll bend this section of the hook. I'll kind of I'll open it up because this hook point actually kind of goes back in towards the the head. So I want to open that back up a little bit. You're going to get a better hook in the fish when you do that. That's it. That's a stupid tube. Very, very deadly weapon on largemouth and smallmouth and spots. Any kind of bass, they like it. That's a wrap, folks. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. And don't forget to turn on that bell notification so anytime I'm dropping content, you'll be the first to know. Had a really fun day out here with Phil. First part of the day was hot and heavy. The second part of the day got really, really slow, but we stuck after it. Beautiful day out here. I mean, this time of the year, you can't ask for anything better than 55, 60 degrees, no wind, just, just a beautiful day. But the jig and the tube was pretty much the deal today. Just fishing real slow, kind of main lake rock, bluffy type banks. And, you know, you catch one off of a piece of standing timber every once in a while. Brush pile deal wasn't really playing. It was just, it was just rock, rock transitions. And most of those fish were like, you know, eight to 12 foot zone, but broke my PB twice for Missouri. You know, I had a 512 up in Mille Lacs, but um, my Missouri smallmouth record came to uh, my Missouri smallmouth record fell to uh, Phil's guide service. So Phil, appreciate it, man. Had a lot of fun. Any any closing thoughts? Uh, what was oh, your man. take with the, take of the day? Beautiful, beautiful day. Good friends. It's all counts. That's right. Caught fish. Had a good time. It was. It was a blast. Really appreciate you. Let me jump in the boat with you. And that's all I got. Till next time. Thank you.